Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a, a 2001 Chevy Monte Carlo SS. Now, this is the second year for the sixth generation Monte Carlo, which uh, was the second generation for front wheel drive. Now the thing is, the Monte Carlo died after 1988. That was a pretty cool car. The G-Body with rear wheel drive, a 305 Monte Carlo SS. Pretty cool little car. Well for 89, it went away. I believe the Lumina replaced it, not sure. But after about eight years of it's coming back, the Monte Carlo's coming back, in 1995, the fifth generation Monte Carlo debuted with, again, front wheel drive, uh, transverse mounted engines, and really not what people thought it was going to be. With that said, the original Monte Carlo is this baby right here. Pretty car, 1970, 71, 72 in this form here. Great looking car. This in fact is a model that I built uh, when I was a little kid. This is part of the AMT uh, Motor City series. It's a promo, but it gives you the idea with the original long hood, very exclusive quarter panels and short deck. Of course, by uh, this fifth and sixth generations, the Monte Carlo became this. And of course, Dale Earnhardt, a legend, the Intimidator. But one thing that the Monte Carlo had only in NASCAR was rear wheel drive. For you and me, these were front wheel drive cars. So again, these two Monte Carlos have a lot in common in terms of NASCAR history, but beyond that, not much at all in common. But as we dig in deeper on this one, we know it's a Super Sport, which is a cool thing. You gotta remember, the fifth generation Monte Carlo didn't have a Super Sport. It had a thing called the Z34, which was the performance model. But for 2000 through 2007, the Monte Carlo SS Super Sport came back. It was the first SS of any kind with front wheel drive, which, you know, was a sign of the times and this car's Lumina roots. Now the SS, of course, came with a chin spoiler, specific aluminum wheels, rocker extensions down here, the SS here on the back. And again, Chevrolet wisely made the SS bright red to jump out at you, Monte Carlo SS. And one of the first uses of an injection molded plastic nameplate on the side of the car stuck, there's no pins. And again, a little deck spoiler, this doohickey right here. Four wheel disc brakes, you know, kind of neat, but the money on these things, or lack of money if you ask me, is under the hood. Now, the Monte Carlo SS was the only Monte Carlo with the big 3.8 liter V6. Okay, base Monte Carlos had a 3.4 liter V6. The crazy thing is, this is the Series 2 3800, 3.8 liters with the barrel ram. This is a 90 degree V6, pretty wide. The 3.4 was part of the 60 degree narrow V, which came out as the 2.8, became the 3.1, etc. And by this point in time, it's a 3.4. That made 180 horse. The bigger 3.8 had 200 horsepower, but more torque. Now, of course, we have to remember that as Monte Carlo SS moved from strength to strength, the supercharged 3.8 would come along and even the 5.3 liter LS could be had up front in a Monte Carlo SS in final years, like 06, 07. With that said, 2000 and 2001, the biggest, baddest motor was this thing right here. At least the Super Sport came with the 3.8. You couldn't get it in anything less. So at least the Super Sport kind of had an exclusive engine, 200 horsepower, 3.8 liter V6. Now this, of course, is Monte Carlo right here, 2000. This is the dealer brochure. And the Monte Carlo, Chevrolet wisely or desperately, you decide, dug deep into the Monte Carlo's NASCAR past. Driving passion, totally unleashed. Okay, if you say so. But it says here, driving enthusiast, this is your car. Consider the all new Monte Carlo a personal invitation to challenge your favorite two lane highway. But they also played hard in their NASCAR involvement. And here we have here an exhilarated indulgence in steel. And if we look, we'll see the Monte Carlo SS. Take a look at the rear view mirror on this one here. There's Taz, the Tasmanian devil. Kind of a cute little Easter egg right there. Gotta remember that Taz was a Warner Brothers Looney Tunes character. And back in 68, Plymouth used the Roadrunner to help sell the Roadrunner. And of course, GM did it again in uh, 2000. But again, this is the Monte Carlo SS. The side you show the world is up to you. And here we have a lot of references to the NASCAR thing. Again, here's number three, Dale Earnhardt, and there's Taz. And again, now Warner Brothers got paid handsomely to have Taz be the mascot for the Monte Carlo SS. So again, by incorporating the Monte Carlo into the world of NASCAR, Chevrolet wisely gave it a performance image. But remember, the NASCAR Monte Carlo had rear wheel drive, it had nothing to do with this thing here except for the body. That said, here is 1995, the first year for the fifth generation Monte Carlo, the first one with front wheel drive. Again, we're looking at a Gen 6 here, this 2001, but this is 1995. And in here we can see 
the Monte Carlo Z34. Now the SS nomenclature was not used in the fifth gen, but what these things had was something a little more exotic. The top engine here was a 3.4 liter four cam V6 with a 210 horsepower rating. In other words, 10 more horsepower than the pushrod 3.8. Interesting to see that they actually went down, but again, the 3.8 had more torque than that four valve, four cam 3.4 ever did. And once again, as we get into 2006, 2007, these things grew the 5.3 LS V8 motor, torque monster, awesome stuff. And they finally redeemed themselves in my book. But again, no all wheel drive in Monte Carlo. They all had fronts, so they were tire spinning monsters. And that's a good thing. I like rubber smoke. Inside, take a peek here. And we can see bucket seats, of course, in this one, leather, pretty sumptuous, plush stuff, automatic transmission. I don't believe you could get the a manual transmission with, with the 3.8, unfortunately. Uh, but again, this one has the four-speed automatic with overdrive up top for excellent fuel economy. This one has the, uh, the wet foot option right here. Kind of nice. On a hot summer day, you dip your feet in that. And uh, speedometer on this thing goes to 140. Tachometer 5600 RPM, a, a statement to the push rod 3.8, which of course has its roots in the 1961 Buick Oddfire V6. Yes, it does. A lot of similarities. But every time I talk about a Monte Carlo here in the junkyard crawl, we have to remember that when the 1970s came out, there was talk of a convertible, that thing right there. This is a General Motors parts accessory catalog, and that thing right there, you know they made some mules. But again, we all know that the Monte Carlo convertible never did happen, but there it is. I always hit this home because uh, what a cool thing that would be, a Monte Carlo convertible. Never happened from the production line, but with that said, interesting stuff. So getting back to this Super Sport, it is cool. I mean, they give four-wheel disc brakes, something you never had in the 70s or the 80s. Kind of cool, but again, dead axle here. This is not a driven axle. This is a front-wheel drive car. But again, the handling on these things was reasonable. And SS only, the trunk spoiler here. Let's take a peek inside the trunk and find out what's going on in here. Okay, yeah, here's the original burgundy type paint. You see it right there, base coat, clear coat. And if you look at it, it's kind of dull. That's because Chevrolet did not clear the inner surfaces. Why bother? So again, this is base coat, clear coat, minus the clear. Meanwhile, on the outer surfaces of the car, we can see the clear doesn't always last so long. That's one of the treasures of base coat, clear coat, environmental paint right there, that it tends to peel. But underneath here, again, the no clear coat to peel in the first place. And again, getting back to uh, the NASCAR thing, this is AMT's release in 1995 of the uh, Kellogg's Monte Carlo NASCAR race car. And again, it was a big deal that uh, Chevrolet Monte Carlo was back in NASCAR with cars like this. But again, it was a, strictly a shell car. There was nothing stock about this, no V6, no front wheel drive. These are strictly 1965 technology, if you will, with a 355 under the hood, but still cool stuff. I'm glad they were at least trying. And in the back here is the Space Saver Spare. This goofy little, uh, this is the uh, blow molded uh, jack spacer thing here. This go inside the spare tire. And again, the run flat, little tiny uh, baby donut right here, which kind of helped car makers reduce the amount of space the spare tire takes. You have more uh, load area in the back, but still has a tire you can limp home on. And of course, these are all temporary use. On this one we see here, it'll say something like, yeah, temporary use right here. In other words, don't drive to uh, the office every day on this thing here. Get to a tire store, fix that thing. And there's also a speed warning on these things. Don't go above, I think, 50 miles per hour. But anyway, these are steel. On later versions, these can be made of aluminum to get even more weight out of the car. And uh, so here we have wrong wheel drive, I mean front wheel drive Chevy Monte Carlo. At least it's a super sport. And again, I'm glad this is not a later car with the 5.3 V6. Glad to see that in the junkyard. One thing, by the way, if you ever find a 5.3 liter V6 in a uh, Chevy SS Monte Carlo, uh, it's not really friendly for typical hot rodding. The reason is the block doesn't have a provision to mount a starter to. Uh, on these front wheel drive cars, the starter mounts to the transaxle. So the block, there's no place to start it. So unless you have a hand crank and a hell of an arm, that LS3 or the 5.3 out of a Monte Carlo SS is not really that useful for a hot rodding application. That said, uh, I'd be saddened to see one of these things in junkyard. Now these things went away, the Monte Carlo in 2007, and nobody really missed them. The bottom line was Chevrolet knew well that after 2010, the Camaro was coming back. And the last Last thing a Chevy dealer wanted was two two-door, two-seat type hot rods on the uh, on the on the auction or on the uh, showroom floor at the same time. So the Camaro 
came, Monte Carlo went away, and nobody really missed it. Will the Monte Carlo name come back? Now we know that Bronco and Maverick and, of course, Camaro, all these retro names are coming back into the world from Ford, etc. Uh, the Monte Carlo, I think, maybe have... Uh, it doesn't have great memories with most people, so I don't know that these things will ever come back. So I think the last of the breed, 2007, is probably the final one that we'll see in my lifetime, as far as I'm concerned. But with that said, this is from when Chevrolet was selling passenger cars in two-door, four-door, wagon, before the SUVs really nuked these things and blew them out of the water. But if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to Steve Mag's YouTube channel, and ring the bell so that you're aware of the next video which comes out tomorrow morning.